Welcome back to this course on SQL Server on Amazon RDS. In this chapter, we're going to create our first RDS instance using the AWS Web Console. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, we're back here in the AWS Console where we can see um, a list of recently visited services, all of the services available, and a little search box at the top. So because I've used things like RDS, it appears here in my recently visited services. If I've never used it before um, and I wanted to find it, it's just a case of scrolling down into the database section and then RDS. If I didn't know what service I wanted, I could actually just type in something in here. If I didn't know it was called RDS, I could type SQL Server and it will come up with a list of things that it thinks are what I'm looking for. The one that I want to choose is RDS because it tells you it's the Managed Relational Database Service. So let's click that and pop into the RDS screen. Now there are some considerations for us when creating our instance. We want to consider which region we want to host the instance in, which version and edition of SQL Server and a few other things too which we'll go through along with the, the installation. Quite simply, to get started, it's really easy. We can just click Create Database on the screen and you're going to be faced with a few options. So, in this example, we'll choose Standard Create. We could choose Easy Create, but Standard Create gives us a few more options to configure. The engine options are listed there. We're going to choose Microsoft SQL Server because that's what this demo is all about. Um, now that we've chosen Microsoft SQL Server, um, it will give us a list of editions. So Express and Web Editions are the sort of free license versions. Standard and Enterprise also include a license cost along with the instance. Now, I'm going to use Express Edition here to keep the cost free. And I'm going to use SQL Server 2017. That's currently the most up-to-date version of SQL Server available in RDS. But 2019 is the latest mainstream SQL Server release, so that will be made available on RDS. In terms of templates, um, you can see whether it's a dev or test instance, or whether it's a free tier. Um, we're going to choose free tier, because that guarantees that everything that we choose, all the options it presents to us, are going to be free of charge, um, which is ideal for a demo scenario. For the DB instance identifier, this is just a unique name you need to give your instance. Um, unique within your own account. So it doesn't matter if someone else has called it the same thing before. I'm going to call this demo DB, which is highly original. And I'm going to set the username to John RDS. I just think admin or SA or something like that is just a little bit of a poor choice when coming to creating a privileged account. Um, for the password, I'm going to pop a password in there. And then I'll need to remember this password in order to log in using SQL Authentication. Scrolling further down, you can see the DB instance class is a DB T2 Micro. Okay, so it's not the most powerful of machines, but it is included in the free tier. If you click to expand the dropdown, you will see a few other ones that are available um, for uh, SQL Server. Um, however, they are greyed out because they're not part of the free tier. Um, for storage, we're going to choose general purpose SSD. And we're going to take the 20 gigabytes of allocated storage because that's also included in the free tier. Just to give you a quick look at something else, if we had chosen something like Enterprise Edition um, or Standard Edition and we scroll down, the free tier disappears, but we get the option for production or dev test. Now, production allows you to set up a multi-AZ instance. So your instance is available across two availability zones. If the primary instance fails, you will get automatic uh, failover. Um, but we're just going to choose this back to the Express Edition just now, back on the free tier. And we're going to scroll down to, to where we left off. In terms of connectivity, um, choose the default VPC. We will discuss VPC in a bit more detail later on. A simple description is that you can create your own virtual networking environment in the cloud 
Or think of it like your own virtual data center where your resources are logically isolated from other resources. For the purpose of this first demo, the default VPC is absolutely fine. Now let's just expand the additional connectivity configuration. For the purpose of the demo, let's make it publicly accessible. Again, this is not something that you may want to do in production. You may want your database instance only to be accessed from other um, instances within your VPC. But it simplifies the demo and lets us connect from a tool like Management Studio from our own laptop. We can still make it secure. We can configure IP address access and certain port access as well. Um, the port that we're going to choose here is 1433. Um, which is highlighted there. That's a default port for SQL Server, but we could choose a different port if that suited our needs um, better. Um, again, we're going to ignore the, the Windows authentication part just now because we're keeping this a, a simple demo and these topics are covered in more detail um, in later videos. Um, moving on to the additional configurations, parameter groups and option groups are ways of extending the default functionality of RDS. Um, we can leave them as they are just now, um, just as the defaults. We have the time zone and collation, like um, the defaults as well. And the same with the backup. So one of the huge benefits of using a managed service is that um, you can enable automatic backups and your cloud provider, in this case AWS, will handle all of the, the backups for you, meaning that you can quite easily do point in time restores. There's probably not too much more to say along here um, for this basic uh, demo. Yeah, let's keep it as it is. Um, one other thing to point out is maintenance. You can enable auto minor version upgrades, which are things like um, cumulative updates. They can be um, upgraded for you on your behalf at a point in time that you choose. You can either have no preference or you can select a window in here. So you could say, let's do it on a Sunday at um, 0.15. And that means that that's your um, available downtime window that you're authorizing AWS to, to do your updates. Um, alternatively, you can just um, keep that unchecked and they will not do any uh, updates for you. And deletion protection just saves you from accidentally dropping an instance. So if you have that box checked, then if you do go to drop an instance, it will ask you to go back into the settings and remove that deletion protection. Um, which is just a good way of making sure that you don't drop things by accident. Um, this final box here on the estimated costs um, doesn't have any particular costs listed because we've chosen the three tier. If we've chosen anything else, it would give us an estimate of what we're going to pay per month. In fact, we just very quickly do this before creating the instance. If we were to go up and say something like um, Enterprise Edition, and then scroll back down, we're going to see that there's a cost in there, 3513 per month, but those prices are subject to change. As I said, we're going to use the Express Edition, so let's keep it simple, and we'll have no costs listed at all. All that's left to do is click Create Database. Now, because this is a T2 Micro, it's not the most powerful of instances, it's going to take about 20 minutes to be created and configured, and once it's created, we'll pick back up uh, with another video. So thanks for listening.